name is Vanessa. I just started this year and I'm part of the Center for Venture um, and today we're going to present our findings from our screening model. So we were assigned this sector, a uh, general overview of the semiconductor sector is basically cap, uh, microchip manufacturing. Without going into all the details, anything that needs, uh, that uses electricity, particularly smartphones, computers, security systems, anything like that, needs a semiconductor. Um, overall, our sector help, our sector uh, is in doing back rate. Ship sales globally have been decreasing the last few quarters, according to EE Times, which is a uh, news aggregate for electronics and semiconductor uh, companies. So overall, the, the sector isn't doing that fantastically, but we hope by the end of this presentation you'll be encouraged to invest with the companies that we found. So we started to bring in data by going into Bloomberg and to Russell 3000. We brought in data from GCIS of industry. We we started off with um, semi-parts and semiconductors, but we saw that our regression was not good at all, or our squared was horrible, and then we went into just, uh, that's just because the companies, one of them is general and one's more concentrated into manufacturing. Then, um, then we just focused on semiconductors we brought in basic uh, metrics like asset turnover, event to margin, but we noticed that they weren't really helping our regression. It wasn't really uh, giving us much information about the market itself. And then we went into more specific. Oops. Um, which which was um, research and development at Spanish Church Net Sales. And something more specific to the market, right? So best estimate for long um, term growth. And then we used a um, rank, we ranked, we used a rank function to for each stock, which is right here. So one thing that, uh, like I said, the R squared originally for measuring fundamentals was atrocious. In fact, if you look at our regression for asset turnover, which is generally supposed to be good positive, it was actually showing a negative slope, hmm. and uh, which kind of threw everything out the window. We figured that the reason for that is because assets, uh, the assets that most of these companies deal with are human capital. Um, you're talking engineers and programmers and very specialized professionals who, you know, as you know, a flaw, I don't know, a flaw or a problem with accounting is that there's a really hard way of measuring that. I mean, you can look at salaries, but we figured that we would look at R&D expenditures to net sales and more of that, how much are they spending to develop new technology in an industry where new technology changes every three months uh, nowadays, especially in this sector. So uh, that's why we chose R&D expenditures to net sales. Another one that we, uh, like my, the junior analyst said, was we started a suggestion from Professor Sweet to look at more technical uh, metrics. So that's why we use best estimate par long-term growth, which really is just an aggregate of different projections made from different analysts. Um, short interest ratio, how, how, much you, how much are people shorting it, and we'll go into more detail, but I do want to point out that right here, one of the companies that we picked, Rambus Incorporated, is a really high short interest ratio. But by the end of this, uh, I'm going to show you why this is probably one of our best companies that we picked. Put call ratio, um, again, just another very technical uh, pick, and of course, for relative moving average price. Okay, so. These are our rankings, and once we ran Solver, here's what we found that according to the market, R&D expenditures and sales got 41% ranking mm. as of to our valuation, which I forgot to mention, our valuation was enterprise value to 12 month EBITDA. So we just figured that was the best uh, valuation for the sector. And again, our prediction about R&D was actually really accurate. So 41% weighting, and we also had a 60% weighting to uh, our Bloomberg Figure default. And best estimate for our long-term growth got a 19% weighting, and asset turnover got 0%. So 
almost completely ignored. So overall, this is a very weird sector. It's very, you know, it's not based on fundamentals. It's based much more on tech, uh, techno technological stuff, as well as technical analysis, uh, technical metrics. So what we ended up doing was uh, we ran a solver. Uh, we had a 58% correlation to the market based off of our model, which isn't that great, but again, considering how really convoluted our, mar our market, our sector is, it kind of makes sense. One thing that we found was that overall, one th uh, the biggest players in the market, like Qualcomm, Intel, Samsung, they're moving not just towards manufacturing, they're moving towards service-oriented work, service-oriented uh, cloud, cloud development and management, uh, cryptography, um, and because it's getting to the point where manufacturing these plants and these manufacturing sites is so expensive that unless you do have great sales, it's not even worth building. So. We found, uh, based off research, uh, we grouped the top 15 companies from our sector, we found, and then measuring with a uh, difference of 15 between uh, the market value and, the, and our ranking, we chose Marvel Technology, Rambus Incorporated, and Sirius Logic. Um, now, Melissa, why are we choosing especially Rambus Incorporated? Rambus, well, the last quarter, um, 2015, from, compared to now, the uh, revenue was, to, was expected to be 79, but it's 72 million. So that really caused the uh, Rambus market stock to go down. Um, but we see, or we look more into it, and the reason why the revenue is down is because a 92.5 million acquisition, it says um, smart card software um, acquisition, and they had a, with eSeats and Bell ID, which is a mobile platform, mobile payment platform, and also a smart ticket and solutions platform. Um, so we see that, and also, they're uh, signing lead licensing agreements with Athena Group and also Semiconductor. So that shows that Rambus is moving from being just a provider or a supplier. Their business model is actually changing from being just a supplier to into a service provider. Now, the companies that we do own so far in our portfolio are Intel, Micron, We own Intel. Uh, that's not it. it's Micron, Intel, and we also own Zillinex. Now we recommend that at this point we keep Intel and Zillinex, but we should definitely get rid of Micron technology because our oh God. What's also happening with these more technical metrics is that uh, whenever we update, it's uh, typically at least one company loses its value, loses that ratio. If you can find it, just delete it real quick. So yeah, you can still show it. But just go, go into your rankings and find it. That is your sector more than anybody else's. It's, it's probably your put call ratio again. So yeah, find that one. Yeah, this, that one cell just hit delete. There you go. All right. Uh, sorry about that. And it's always a surprise opening up this one. <laughs> but um, so our owning Micron, no matter what ranking or what technique we use, both the market and our model rank Micron as absolute last. Um, so we highly recommend that we sell this company and instead acquire, we keep Intel, we keep Zonex, and we definitely acquire Rambus. The market puts it at 16th, we put it at 10, and we see that for tremendous opportunity for growth. Because um, another recommendation from eetimes.com was that exactly what Rambus is doing, start moving from manufacturing because it's getting so razor thin uh, to make a profit in that to service oriented. So, that's our presentation. Any questions?
I don't know if I have any questions, but I, I, you know, piece of feedback I'll give that I really liked was the, um, you know, like the, the curiosity that you had in the sense that, you know, what a lot of people do with these models is they kind of take the numbers and they force them to, to fit things well. And so I like the, you know, I encourage you to keep, if you see something that looks odd and then trying to come up with a reason why that's true, and I think you explained that very well. And again, I think that it's important when working with these because computers are so powerful now, you can, you can force these to, to work, you know, and so to try to put logic behind it and, and have it be more rational, I think is really important. So I thought that you did uh, a very good job on that part and uh, explained it very well. I don't have questions because I've, I've, I've seen them all the time. They've already got 50 of last questions. No, I want to keep my powders dry. <laughs> Thank you. All right, good talk. Yeah.